This podcast is produced by the Harwood Productions Podcast Network. To learn more about the network and to find more of our shows, visit us online at www.harwoodpodcast.com. Hey there, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of SketchUp, a 3D Toolbox. I'm Cameron Harris, and this is episode number five. Today, we're going to be concentrating on the rectangle tool, and it's really the simplest drawing tool that there is in SketchUp. All it does is it creates a two-dimensional, four-sided object. Could be a rectangle, could be a square, could be pretty much any size you want. Now, it may seem very simple, but it is very powerful at the same time. And this is where you really start all of your models, is with a simple rectangle. So let's get started. So let's just pop open this SketchUp project I've got here for the rectangle tool. And you can see it's completely empty. And that's what we're going to fix. We're going to start uh, actually building something using the rectangle tool. So uh, you can see here, first of all, that there are these things there are these things called axes, which sort of represent the center of your model. So you can see you have this green line, this red line, this blue line, and they all kind of intersect right here. That's pretty typical in any 3D application. You're going to see that. The blue line represents up and down. Uh, the red line represents left and right. And the X, uh, rep uh, I'm sorry, the green line represents forward and backward, typically. Uh, you'll also see uh, the blue be referred to as the Z direction, red as the, uh, the X direction, and green as the Y direction, if you're into that sort of thing. But uh, basically, all you need to worry about is that this right here is the center of your model, or sometimes people call it the origin of the model. And that's typically a good place to start. So let's, uh, let's just build ourselves a rectangle. So the rectangle tool is this, uh, looks like a square right here. You hover over it, it says rectangle. You can select it and also the keyboard shortcut for that is the letter R. Remember R for rectangle takes you right to it. Now uh, you'll notice if we uh, our cursor has turned into a pencil and it's got a little uh, rectangle right next to it. So uh, that's how you know you're in the rectangle tool and you'll notice if we hover over that center of origin we get this little gold dot this is one of the things that's really nice about SketchUp. It's called snapping. Basically, a tool like the rectangle tool or the line tool or any almost any tool that involves drawing or measuring something will snap to points such as the origin. And we'll look at this a little bit more. For now, you'll notice that if I just get close to it, it snaps right to it. Also, if I get close to any one of these lines, these axes, I get a nice little dot right there and I know I'm gonna start right there so to draw a rectangle I just click wherever I want the first corner to be and I just drag out and you can see it gives me a nice little preview once I get it to where I like it to be that little diagonal line means that I'm conforming with the golden ratio which is a it's an architecture thing you don't really need to worry about it it's kinda of nice once I get to where I like it I kinda of like that I just click again and I have my rectangle. It draws the surrounding lines for me and it also automatically adds the face. Now let's look at this snapping thing a little bit more. Let's say I wanted, uh, let's say I was building a floor plan for a house and these rectangles represented rooms. Let's say I wanted to have another room uh, starting at this corner right here. You can see if I just hover over that corner I get that little green dot. That means that if I click on it it's going to start at exactly that corner. That's the snapping thing in action. So if I draw another one there, I can also, look at that, if I just kind of hover over kind of the middle of this line, it gives me that little blue dot that says midpoint. And that, that means if I start there, I'm gonna come out right from the center of that line. I can also just kind of snap myself to any line so I know I'll start on that line. I just can go anywhere there, something like this, snap to that corner. It automatically fills in that face right there because it's surrounded on all of its edges. And uh, that's how you can uh, start building things very, very simply. Now this is where our measurements box starts to come into play. You'll remember it from our first episode. I'm just going to select all and delete this, so we'll start from scratch. 
I want you to pay close attention to this guy right down here, bottom right corner. It says measurements. Now, it might say dimensions at some points, but it's the same thing, really. Look at this box right here. If I go up to the rectangle tool and I start drawing a rectangle, look at that. It says dimensions. And you can see that it actually says what dimension my box that I'm drawing, my rectangle that I'm drawing, is. So you can see it says it's a one foot, four inches, and nine sixteenths of an inch. And then there's a comma, and then it says ten inches and seven sixteenths of an inch. So I know that that's how big my rectangle is going to be. Now, that's not just there for reference. Oftentimes, I mean, you can freehand this. You can just you know, kind of go, oh, that looks about right. That looks about right. That looks pretty good. Do whatever. But that's not really the way that most people work, particularly if you're drawing something like a house where you want to have rooms have specific dimensions. And also, I mean, I draw this thing here. Let's say this is supposed to be the room of a house, a living room or something like that. It's actually only about three feet by two feet, <laughs> actually a little bit less. So, I mean, it's not very big. The dimensions tool will really help us with that. So if I just start drawing a rectangle, so I click a point and I just kind of extend it out to wherever I want, but I don't click again to finalize. It's still just kind of giving me a preview. I can actually type in values on my number pad. So on my keyboard, let's say I want this room to be uh, 10 foot wide by 15 foot long. I can type in 10, and you can see the dimensions box kind of turns a little bit yellowy, and I can add whatever I want. 10, and then apostrophe is kind of the symbol for foot. So it's 10 foot, so that's one dimension. Comma switches to the neck, the other dimension, how long it's going to be. 15 apostrophe. And now if I hit return or enter, wow, it's huge. <laughs> Yeah, that, and it only looks huge. It's actually 10 foot by 15 foot. Uh, it's just I'm zoomed in quite a ways. And, you, and there's my perfect 10 foot by 15 foot rectangle. Now let's say I wanted to have another room coming out of here. I can start at that corner and go like this. Let's be a little bit more precise now. Let's do inches. Uh, let's say I want this to be um, this room to be six foot, so six apostrophe for six foot and as well as nine inches. Now I can just say six foot nine. If you don't put an apostrophe next to a number, it's automatically considered to be an inch. So six foot nine, that's six feet, nine inches, comma, five foot, four inches. Enter. And there it is. That's the exact same, that's the exact dimensions that I was going for. This is really useful if you're trying to replicate a room uh, in SketchUp. You can just take the measurements of the room, figure, okay, the room is 10 foot by 20 foot, and then you can just type that into SketchUp and it automatically resizes it for you. It's really useful, as well as just using it as kind of a guide when you're drawing. Even if you do want to just freehand it, you can kind of tell, okay, so that's about, about 6 foot 10 by 4 foot 7, give or take half an inch or so. It's really useful for that kind of stuff. And uh, that's one of the basics, and this works with most of the drawing tools, and we'll be taking a look at that in uh, future episodes. Now, if you're wondering when we're actually going to start modeling three-dimensional objects, don't worry about it, because everything in SketchUp really starts out as a two-dimensional shape. It's then extruded into 3D later, and that's what we're going to be learning about next time. In the meantime, you can check us out online at www.harwoodpodcast.com. There you can download lesson files, show notes, participate in the forums, all that good stuff. And if you have any questions or comments on the show, just email us at harwoodpodcast at comcast.net. We'd love to hear from you. So until next time, I'll just say goodbye and good modeling.